Today we're going to take you around a city that completely won us over, Taipei. As two self-proclaimed foodies who are always on the hunt for the next meal, we love the amazing mix of restaurants and street markets the city had to offer. On top of that, there were plenty of temples, museums, and nature escapes to keep us busy throughout the day, so we actually managed to pack quite a bit into our trip. With this video, we're going to show you 30 things to do in Taipei, Taiwan, and you can count on a few foodie recommendations to be sprinkled throughout. Now let's get started. Let's start with the city's most iconic landmark, Taipei 101. Well, good morning. Today the skies have finally parted, it has stopped raining. So we're going to visit the attraction we've been waiting for. We're heading to Taipei 101. This was the tallest building in the world at one point. It no longer is. So yeah, it should be fun and we should be able to get some great views of the city. Have the tickets you paid you yeah do the math. so it's uh 600 taiwan dollars each so you're basically looking at just under 20 us bucks about 19 dollars so not cheap but i think it's gonna be worth it So we made it to the top. Yeah, that was crazy. So it took 37 seconds. When we both got off, we thought, man, it felt like it was only like five or 10 seconds. I know. And to get up that high, it didn't feel like as powerful as you would think. Like it was still really smooth. Yeah, it was very smooth, but my ears did pop. Once you finish visiting Taipei 101, you'll exit inside the Taipei 101 Mall, which is also worth the visit. This is a mall with high-end brands and designer labels, and it's probably the most luxurious mall we've ever set foot in. So if you're looking for panoramic views of Taipei that also include Taipei 101, you'll want to climb Elephant Hill. Currently struggling here, they call it a hike, but really it's just hundreds of stairs and you're just climbing stairs the whole time. But we're starting to get nice views. Just catching our breath now. So I think the hardest part was probably the humidity, not even the steps. Yeah. Sam, what did you think? I'm sweating profusely. I I'm think I see some little drips there on your forehead. Little, I, like, I'm totally drenched in my shirt. I'm so glad we brought water because we weren't initially planning to do this one today. Yeah. So good idea to put some water in my backpack. Next, we visited Liberty Square, which is flanked by the National Theatre to the north, the National Concert Hall to the south, and the Freedom Square Memorial Arch to the west. These structures are impressive enough on their own, but the main reason you come here is to see the Chiang Kai-shek Memorial Hall, which was erected in memory of the former President of the Republic of China. You can also watch a changing of the guard ceremony at the memorial, but try to get there early, otherwise you'll be several rows of people deep. Another place to visit in Taipei is the National Revolutionary Martyr Shrine, which was built to honor the soldiers who died during the War of Resistance against Japan, the civil war between nationalist and communist China, and the first and second Taiwan Strait crises. You can also watch the changing of the guard here. arrived at the Shillin night market and it's still quite early it's 4 30 p.m. most of the stalls start opening closer to 5 o'clock and things will only continue to get busier as the night goes on and apparently this market can run to like 1 or 2 in the morning so yeah still very early we were hungry so we couldn't wait any longer if you're a foodie you'll definitely enjoy Shillin night market there are food options galore and there's enough variety that you can turn all the snacking into a full meal if your taste buds are feeling adventurous, be sure to track down stinky tofu. So Sam is leading the way with this one. What are we having next? All right, moment of truth. We've been playing it kind of tame, playing it kind of safe so far. We're going right into the classic uh, Taiwanese street food here. We are having stinky tofu. I'm gonna go take a bite here. Yeah. I think there's some cabbage. You can see it's on a double skewer yeah, here. Yeah, double skewers and it's got cabbage in the middle, somewhat like a sandwich. 
Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> A little overpowering there. That is something else. <laughs> it's spicy. Um, oh man. I'm keeping my distance. Oh, it's just, you really taste the sourness of it and yeah. the, the fermented aspect and oh that's something that that would take a while to get used to i don't i don't think i'm ever going to enjoy this one to be honest one of my favorite outings in taipei was riding the maokong gondola up to the hills the route is 4.3 kilometers long and we rode in cabins with glass floors which was kind of scary but cool at the same time And of course, because this is Taipei, it started raining again as soon as we got off the gondola. So I think we're gonna pop in for some tea. There are lots of little tea houses around here. So yeah, we're gonna stay dry and hope the rain stops. Sam is stealing my order. He saw that I was ordering something really tasty and he was like, that's what I'm getting. Yeah, well, copycat. You're, you're taking the good one. Copycat. So I'm, I'm copycatting, why not? So we found a tea house with a view. We've got Taipei 101 off in the distance. And we also have nice lush greenery all around us. And we feel really far removed away from the city, which is quite a nice feeling. It doesn't actually take that long to, to get away from the city center and to be out in nature, which is something I really like. We may have gone a little overboard. We ordered two different kinds of teas, one coffee and lots of Taiwanese desserts. This one's actually Sam's. I believe it's Teguain, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yeah, Teguain or Teguan tea. Uh, we asked what was the local tea and they suggested this, this is one. This the one. So we have to let it steep for two minutes and yeah. then we can pour it. And then look at the snack plate we have. So. We've got cookies, we've got dried fruit, we've got something that... This looks like green. mango. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, oh it looks my. so good. It looks like... Is that one with like... Uh, has peanuts or something or...? Maybe. Wow. I'm gonna wait for my tea and then we'll dig into this. Already getting into the snacks? Yeah, I already had one of these. <laughs> this is awesome. This is like one of those um, sweet and sour dried plums. Oh, I love these. Mm. You're just popping them like candy. Mm -hmm. They're really good. Um, they have a large pit in the middle, but really sweet and sour. Um, so flavorful. <laughs> you look like you're having a moment over mm, there. I am. <laughs> Dessert time! What are you trying to into this cookie. I really hope it's peanut butter. Please be peanut butter. Mm. What is it? Not peanut butter. Not peanut butter? Is it sweet? Yeah, but I can't identify what it is. It's not peanut butter. <laughs> well, why would it be? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a thing in Taiwan, is it? For me to try this one. I think it's puffed rice. It's light in the hand, sticky. Mm. Well, nice yeah. and crunchy. Sweet on the outside. Mm. I like it. And now there's one more left to try, that little green one. Please be wasabi. Please be wasabi. <laughs> it's probably going to be matcha. No. It's like a crumbly, I don't know if you call it a cookie, it's more like a, a cake. Is it green tea flavored? No, it's not. Is it wasabi? No, it's not. <laughs> it's sweet. It's really good though. On the way back from the gondola, you'll exit next to the Taipei Zoo, which is a family-friendly attraction in the city. We are now visiting the Beito Hot Springs, and it smells like rotten eggs. It doesn't smell very pretty, but it does look pretty cool. So we can't go swimming in that very spot because it's over 75 degrees Celsius and that would kind of cook you up. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, that would not be fun. So we're visiting Guangdu Nature Park and it's nice to get out of nature here obviously but we're hoping to also spot some birds as well today. 
So Sam is being way too loud in this park and all the birds keep flying away before he can spot them. So Sam, are you spotting any birds or are you scaring them away? Probably a bit of both. Like, I spotted a few but I didn't have my camera ready so it was a bit of a photography fail. But uh, we just started so I'm still confident we can find some. I think you're being too loud. That's why the birds keep flying away. So Sam spent so much time in nature that he just confused a bird call for the sound of a construction truck. <laughs> what? How is that possible? Hey, the construction truck sounds a little different over here, I guess. <laughs> I don't have any excuses. Tam Shui is a seaside district that's 40 minutes north of Taipei, so we thought we'd include it in the list. The bike path along the waterfront makes it perfect for a day trip on a sunny day. So this is pretty cool. We just rented bikes outside of the station and I did my math wrong so I thought it was $10 for an hour, which I thought was great. But it turns out it's only a little over a dollar and you get the bicycle for a whole hour and you can just ride along the waterfront. So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. And it's a beautiful day to be out after all that rain. So the biking was a lot of fun. I mean, we covered quite a bit of territory in just one hour. Really cool just going out and seeing people fishing, you see people out shopping, doing different things. Mm -hmm. just, it's nice and quiet out here. Yeah. And there are like museums and cultural attractions. We didn't really visit many of them because we would have had to get off of our bikes and we didn't have a lock for that. So yeah, we just kind of focused on the bike ride, which was fun and stuff. If you don't want to go all the way to Tam Shui, you can also explore Taipei by bike with the U-Bike share system that has kiosks across the city. Today we're on a bit of a food mission. We've been hearing about Din Tai Fung. Apparently they specialize in soup dumplings. That's yeah. what we're going to try today. We absolutely love dumplings. So any excuse for us to eat dumplings is always a good one. And yeah, it's another rainy day in Taipei. So we figured <laughs> let's plan our day around food. Let's go eat. Yes, and this place opens at 10 in the morning and we are expecting huge lines. So we're here early. Let's go get in line. So before coming here, we were reading the history of the place and apparently the man who started this, Yang, he used to run a shop where he sold cooking oil and like that was his business. But apparently when that industry started to change and people weren't buying as much cooking oil anymore, he had to come up with a new business idea. So he and his wife decided, okay, we're going to sell soup dumplings. And like they became such a huge hit that today they have locations not only like across Taipei and Taiwan, but also around the world in places like LA and Hong Kong. So yeah, pretty cool story. And now we're waiting for the food. Look of excitement. So the star of the meal has arrived. The Xiaolong Bao is here on the table in real life. And this is cool. So you eat it with a special sauce and they actually give you instructions on how it's done. How to enjoy Xiaolong Bao. This is how you eat it. Um, and they basically explain how to prepare the sauce. So we're going to try our hand at this. The waiter actually wanted to make it for us and we're like, no, we are filming this. <laughs> <laughs> so allow me to demonstrate. Okay, so first up we have our little plate with ginger right here. So it says put some soy sauce and vinegar. So it's one part soy sauce. One part soy sauce. And three parts vinegar. I'd say that's about three parts vinegar. Next up we grab our little xiaolong bao and dip it into the sauce. Once it's been dipped, we place it on the spoon. Let's see what's next. Oh, let's not forget, you have to poke a little hole to let out 
the soupy broth that's hiding in there. Can you see that? Oh my gosh. Oh wow. Look at it. Look at that out. pouring out. And then, then you take some of the ginger from the plate, add it on top, and it all goes in in one bite. Is that too big for one bite? Let <laughs> me <laughs> try. Mm. Is that tasty? Wow. That is amazing. That is so juicy. Oh man. Is that one of the best dumplings you've ever had? It really is. I'm so glad we came here and stood in line. This is worth it. So next up, we are visiting the National Palace Museum. It is still drizzling, if you can believe that. But at least the sun has also come out. So a little bit warmer, we've got some rainbows. And yeah, we're just gonna visit this place. Okay, so we had a slight change of plans. It was really crowded to go into the museum and they actually had lines to visit some of the galleries. So we decided to scrap that, we're not going in. And we're visiting the Qishan Gardens instead, which are right next door. It's really cheap to get in. And yeah, it's so peaceful. Hardly anyone in sight. Another thing to do in Taipei is to visit the Longshan Temple. This is a Buddhist temple that was built by Chinese settlers from Fujian in honor of Guanyin, also known as the Goddess of Mercy. Now it's been a while since we talked about food in this video, so let's hop over to the Raoi Street Night Market. This market was even more geared towards foodies than the Xilin Night Market, which we had previously visited. We had baked pork buns, egg tarts, cartoon-shaped waffles, chicken steak, as well as a few mysterious snacks. However, the most memorable was the liquid nitrogen ice cream. Please put the whole cookie deep in your mouth and chew with So what are you having, Audrey? It's smoking. Smoking cookie. I have to put this whole thing in my mouth, chew with my teeth, yeah. not with my tongue. All right. Yeah. Whoa, smoking out of your mouth. <laughs> you look like a dragon. <laughs> Is it good? <laughs> oh, it's like ice. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can kind of get stuck to your tongue. That's why they tell you like eat it with your teeth and eat it fast. And while we're on the topic of food, let us show you what a typical Taiwanese breakfast looks like. So this is a wheat cake, sesame seeds on the exterior, and it has an omelet inside. And for those of you with a sweet tooth, allow us to introduce you to mango shaved ice. All right, so our dessert has arrived and it is standing room only at this particular spot. So they've got like this little bar outside where you just bring your dessert, you eat it here. But yeah, because all the, all the tables are full. <laughs> I know, it's packed with people and there's a huge line of people ordering. So this is it. This is the mango snowflake ice. It's a mountain, like this is huge. And we went for the classic, so it's just mango and panna cotta on top. But I mean, they probably have like 10 different flavors with like strawberries and chocolate and red yeah. bean, like you could choose anything. Okay, so I'm just gonna try to get a bit of everything. Oh wow, the ice is melting a bit already. Okay. I know, you have to be fast with this because it just Zero. starts melting on okay. the spot. And I'm gonna get some piece of mango. So I've got a little bit of everything now. Mm. What do you think? Oh yeah, that's really sweet. You taste the, you really taste the shaved ice, you really taste the syrup, and the nice big chunks of mango. Fresh mangoes. It reminds me of something we had in Korea not too long ago called mm -hmm. Sulbing, yeah. which is their shaved ice dessert, and yeah, it's really good. Um, I think I would enjoy this even more on a hot day as opposed to a cool one like this, but still a lot of fun and still really enjoying it. Yeah. We also made sure to try a dish that's a local favorite, beef noodle soup. We're going to be trying beef noodle soup and this is a super popular dish. We plotted a whole bunch of places on our phone and finally settled on one. So let's go find Jianhong beef noodles. Let's go. 
All right, so the food is already here. It came out super quickly. We ordered two bowls, and this is a small portion, but you know what? I think this is going to be pretty filling for pretty one big person. Pretty for a small portion. Yeah. I was kind of worried we wouldn't be able to get a table because it's already 11.30 in the morning, so kind of close to lunch, but there's still plenty of space, so that's good. Um, but yeah, anyways, let's have a look, a closer look at the meal. So here you have it. So it's a noodle soup with a beef broth and these chunks of meat those on top. These are really generous chunks of, of meat. I know, there. yeah. It's thick. It's a lot thicker than I would have imagined. Yeah. And the beef, it can be tendon, brisket, or shank. And again, I was worried this was going to be all tendon and I'm not a huge fan of tendon. So I'm glad to see like some really nice cuts of meat in here with not a whole lot of fat. So yeah, I'm gonna grab some chopsticks right here. Lots of what appears to be uh, chive green onions. Yeah. Yeah, well. chives on top. So. so let's do this. Let's try it. Noodles first. Put it right on noodles. the spoon. On a spoon, perhaps. Mm. That's good. They look thick. They're quite thick, yeah, they're nice, a little chewy. They've been soaking in the beef broth, so that's nice. Let's go for some noodles and meat now. Oh my, this is messy. I do not have a talent for noodles and chopsticks, my goodness. <laughs> Why don't you try the meat? Both of them, noodles and meat. Okay, so we're getting the noodles on there. Got the noodles, fine. <gasps> okay, you know what? Let's just go for the meat, guys. <laughs> the chopsticks aren't helping me today. Mm. Oh wow, it's like really salty and savory. Mm. You like that? Mm -hmm. It's quite tender as well. No, yeah, this has been cooking for a while. This is good. Pleasantly surprised over here. If I had to describe Hua Shan 1914 Creative Park in two words, it would be hipster central. This place was once a winery, but today it's a multi-purpose space that draws artists looking to showcase plays, films, art, photography, and so much more. We also noticed it's really popular with Instagrammers. Seriously, there were photo shoots happening every few steps. So if you happen to be in Taipei on a rainy day, you can check out the National Taiwan Museum. However, if you're here on a rainy day and a Monday like we are, you're out of luck. We're only going to be able to show you the exterior and that's about it. Another place to visit is the 228 Peace Memorial located in the same park as the National Taiwan Museum. It commemorates the victims of what is known as the February 28th incident, which began on the same date and saw thousands of civilians killed for taking part in an anti-government uprising. So next up we are at Xing Tian Temple, which you can see right behind me. And this temple has more of a local feel, you don't see as many tourists here. And the temple is dedicated to the patron saint of businessmen. So I'm guessing lots of businessmen are probably going to be in here praying and getting blessings. So let's go check it out. We also made time to visit the Taipei Expo Park, which is a multi-purpose park just north of the city center that hosts different events and exhibitions. From there, it's just a skip and a hop to the Taipei Fine Arts Museum, which focuses on modern and contemporary art. And while you're at it, you can also visit Taipei Story Museum, which is a house that was built in the English Tudor style by a tea merchant and now holds exhibits related to tea and local history. The street food adventures continue and we are going to be eating at the Ningxia Night Market. So this is our third night market here in Taipei and I feel like there's still a lot of Taiwanese street food we haven't tried so we're going to be on a mission to try a whole bunch of new stuff tonight. You may be tired of hearing about night markets and street food at this point but indulge us once more for our third and final market visit in Taipei. In Ningxia Night Market we sampled a shrimp stick stuffed with cheese, Chinese scallion pancakes, Flaming beef, yes, they cooked it with a blowtorch, 
papaya milk smoothies, cheese potato, and coffin bread. Now wrapping up this video, here's a quick note on transportation. Travel tip for Taipei. Yeah, so pretty much the easiest way to get around Taipei is by the MRT. And if you're gonna come here, you wanna pick up an easy card. Mm -hmm. We paid 100 Taiwanese dollars, which is about three US dollars right now. And then you can load it, reload it. It helps you save on fares. And the best part is you don't have to keep getting single purchase fares every time you go to the station. And that's it for our visit to Taipei. We hope you enjoyed this video and that you got a few ideas of things to do, see, and most importantly, eat on your next visit. As always, if you have any other suggestions of fun things to do around Taipei, we invite you to share them with travelers in the comments below. Wishing you happy travels and until next time.